So real quick before we get into the deck, if you're part of the 57% of viewers who watch these videos but aren't subscribed, come on now, hit the subscribe button, I put out a new TCG video every day. Oh. Right, let's let's try that again. Right, welcome guys to Slowboat. Well, it was about five minutes in there, guys. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> but look who we've got fresh off his re uh, regional victory. The one, the only Tor de Reclef. How are you? Hi, I'm great, actually. Uh, getting another win always feels great, so... That's it. Add it to the um, intercontinental ones as well, yeah? <laughs> so, yes. let's dive straight in. Malmo, you've done it again. You broke, you sort of broke a deck. You had Firebox, you've had um, Zyropod, and now you've sort of done it with ADP, changing from the sort of tag call engine to a sort of newer based acro bike uh, spinner. So, yeah, just talk to me about how you sort of came to the conclusion that that was the best way to play ADP for the tournament. All right, so um, I figured that ADP has a really... Uh, strong strategy on its own because like half the people at the tournament are playing the deck and for good reason right it's just really really powerful um, especially the station card is uh, extremely good you have an anti-brick ability basically so instead of saying pass you can always use the ability yeah. and it also attaches energy so like uh, it can power itself for next turn even which is incredible and uh, then finally ADP got um, the partner it needed or, because uh, you didn't really have too many great water or metal Pokemon in the format before yeah. Sword and Shield. Like the best one was Keldu and it still didn't do exactly what ADP wanted to do. You could tank a lot and be more annoying but like Sejan is what uh, ADP really wanted all along. Yeah. A cheap one shotter that could help its consistency and just knock out everything um, you even printed the metal saw so the deck has everything going for it right now and um, the strategy on itself is just really powerful mm -hmm. so I just want to make it as consistent as powerful right so um, I tried experimenting around other ways to do it than the tackle engine because yeah. I didn't really like the fact that um, uh, the tackle engine just tries to be really consistent getting ADP in play that's fair but then you have to use a whole turn using use Mahala to get an energy. Yeah. And uh, that kind of stings when you can't use supporters turn one. So then yeah. say, say go first, which, which is what you want, right? If you want the coin flip. Mm -hmm. Then you can't play supporters turn one. And then the next turn you have to use your whole supporter turn only to get an energy in play. And that doesn't feel too great. So instead I tried experimenting with other ways to do it. So come up with like the spinner thing. Um, and uh, more the Dene, that approach. Yeah. Um, and just trying to draw into the energy manually instead. So if you draw into the spinner or an energy, then it would be good to go powering up um, the ADP. Then also adding Cherish Ball. So that Cherish Ball doubles out as an out to the Dene and um, the ADP in yeah. the first few turns so that Say you didn't have ADP or energy, you could just go for the Den and try to join to both of them. So you can get your ADP plus energy attachment on the first turn. And then the spinner can also double up and find you the metal energies, of course, um, yeah. later in the game, so they're not dead. And it also actually gives you more outs, even though it's less physical outs, because you can go like the Dene, Professor Research, and then Urachi, all to find the spinner, yeah. uh, which you can't do uh, with the tackle engine. As soon as you use the Research, you're locked, right? You can't you can't dig for the water energy, uh, like search it out anymore. But you can with uh, the spinner. And as if you go second, um, the spinner can net you three energy, which can make for some crazy high rolly turn one station attacks, which uh, can really just win you the game on the spot. So really happy with um, engine overall. Um, at the first, I actually experimented with um, flipping cards. It was just the building is more of a, as a joke deck. Uh, for ladder and play like uh, all 12 flipping cards I could find and play like four cards for scoop up for catcher, right? Um, but then I just so that I really like the engine I tried in that deck and tried to make it more serious well, like So I get the crushing first of all mm -hmm. and then the deck that was left was actually really good uh, Pedro actually ended up playing that deck Because yeah. um, yeah. he really enjoyed the power level the scoop up and the catchers uh, left him with, and um, he, he told me I haven't felt that great with the deck's power level in years, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I was originally going to play that as well, but 
last few days, I just really tried to see if I can find a way around the flipping cards. Because I, yeah. I don't really like playing flipping cards for big tournaments. Uh, it always feels kind of meh. Um, it was really strong, though. Kind of beat everything. Um, but then I just decided to try out other things. Right? Just, so I, I just get all of them, and then I just try to boost the consistency instead. Uh, so I added the bikes, obviously. I added another Dedenne. I added another Cherry Spall. Um, just to really uh, boost the consistency. And it worked out really well. So then the deck could deck out really quickly, get all your saucers whenever needed. So the engine actually worked that well that you could play almost picture perfect game plans every time, which for ADP is crazy because that means yeah. say you go first, right? You can go attachment ADP pass. You can go attach GX, and then you can pretend your opponent has everything, mm -hmm. and say, okay, your ADP gets knocked out. All right, then you can really easily answer with the station, just double source attachment. It sounds really hard, but it's really not when you have this much digging power. And you do a knockout, boom, uh, take three or four passes, right? And then your opponent knocks you out again. And here, normally, you would just be dead, right? Because there's no yeah. way you could answer again. But now this deck has the engine to actually deck out and find your last two saucers. So, so, so as long as you don't have any saucer in like last three prizes, you can actually answer again. And that's really incredible, actually. So almost unbeatable um, on its own when uh, you can just deck out and find everything. Of course, things can go wrong and you can discard things suboptimally, but um, it was doing what it needed to do really consistently. Um, and that's, uh, I think, what gave it an edge uh, this weekend. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah. like, it uh, cleaned up super well for you. <laughs> uh, moving forward, do you reckon that list needs to change? One thing I noticed was there's only, what, two shrines, I believe. Did you ever miss having the extra damage modifiers at all? Or I actually felt it was really fine. Um, okay. A lot of games, your ADP doesn't even get knocked out on after your GX attack, right? And if your ADP doesn't get knocked out, the damage modifiers actually don't matter in the slightest because then you either knock out the tag team in the active or you knock out the den on the bench and start the station. And then the station can um, uh, knock out another the den, for example, um, or another GX for the game. And, and if you just hit the active, then you're just content with two-shotting the active, no damage modifiers needed, and then you just knock out anything with the station afterwards. So um, if that... All of those cases, the damage modifiers never matters, right? And uh, it's all good. Um, the shrine, uh, I felt it was enough. Obviously, it gets stopped by swell, but I didn't feel it was that important. I rather wanted just dig through the deck because I felt it was much more impactful um, whether you could do an attack a turn or if you had extra 10 damage a turn. Say you had all these extra damage modifiers, but then you more often whiff an attack, right? So like, okay, you missed out on 10, 20, 30 damage. Um, but at least you got to hit your 260 this turn, which if you had all these other cards inside the Vakra bike, so you can draw into your Metal Sauce, you wouldn't actually hit that all, right? So uh, just felt more consistent and like a better way to do it than having all these damage from the first. Obviously, it can matter a lot, for example, in the mirror, because people try to like shrine damage, double ping your... Um, ADP so they can knock it out with Sation so they don't have to guest around on the first one. But I still felt it was all right. In in the end, it's more about just getting the attack off first. And if if you're more out to Sation and energy and switches, it's probably what you want to do. So I, I thought it was a pretty fair deck, honestly. Yeah, well, obviously, again, it just uh, seemed to work super well. Um, <clears throat> I imagine moving forward that people might try to combat this list. I imagine, like we just said, mentioned with like the damage modifiers, they might look to put stuff like Big Charm in or like, you know, the um, Metalcore Barrier. Do you feel as if you could ever try and weave a Lissandre Labs to warrant that? Or is that, again, too defensive and not sort of building towards your consistent engine? Mm, what card did you want to weave with? Uh, uh, Lissandre Labs, sorry. Lissandre Labs, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that is definitely an option. It's a good card. It's a good option you could have. Um, I don't think it's that needed though, uh, but but it does have uses, of course. You don't really search it out too well without um, oh, the engine, right? Yeah. You don't play the Guzmahala. 
So if you were to go that route, you probably would want like two, but then it'd be too much commitment for the card, which doesn't do that much compared to the deck space mm -hmm. uh, or other things. So I'll probably not recommend it too much, but uh, it's an option you can go for. Probably better in a tackle engine though. Okay, love that, love that. That's uh, interesting. Now, see, I've been playing a bit of ADP myself, you see, and I found right with this sort of tag call engine, you sort of mid game, like they said, like you like you described, if your ADP does get one banged quite early, you are a bit on the back foot. And like I said, even if you do get the double source for your first station, if that goes as well, you really are in trouble town. You definitely don't get the yeah. That's that's one, right? Yeah, so. that's it. Yeah. So as soon as I saw your list, I was like, ah, oh, this is what I need. Acro vibes, the, the more search, more dig. This is exactly <laughs> what I want. And I was like, it took someone's clever to work that one out. So um, what else for you sort of day two and your sort of matchups? How do they sort of went? Um. So day one, I went, uh, let's see, what did I even go? Uh, I think I went 7-1-1, one, one, day one. Yeah. I was pretty happy with that. Um, just lost to um, Medi, actually. Medi got me uh, and played the mirror. Um, but yeah, day two, I kind of had an um, unfortunate run because I don't really like to play against the Babel as the matchup because yeah. uh, it's basically... I try to go turn to GX and Marnie, and if they do 300 to me, I will lose. <laughs> and if they don't, I will win. And that's basically the whole matchup. So that was um, uh, really scary. And I faced three of these decks. <laughs> it's like round one, I play against Stefane. He beats me. Uh, it was kind of fair. Uh, felt like the matchup was pretty bad. He played really well, and uh, he just beat me. It was uh, really fair enough. Um, next round, I... Um, Face another baby blaze. I was not too happy about that, but he might actually manage to beat though, because I could do the turn to Marnie and he whiffed that attack, and I was able to win. Uh, next round, I'm playing stream against uh, Filip Lisevsky, played Pika, and I win the coin flip, and he missed the turn on full blitz, and uh, that's basically it, because then he can't keep up anymore. That's unfortunately how that matchup goes as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you can GX before they damage you, they will just struggle a lot. Yeah. Um, I also drew really good against him. On top of that, of course, like even for my deck, I drew really good against him. <laughs> uh, didn't have to discard any, like any resources at most points and stuff. Uh, like at game one and three, at least, like game two, I just completely break and play a supporter that game. Um, happens again. I think that was my only true full break actually. Uh, was my game two against him. Um, so now I had won two games uh, and lost one. And since I started 7-1-1, and this was a relatively small regional, mm -hmm. we didn't need too many points to actually get there. Um, so the last two rounds, I actually uh, went for two IDs. Oh, okay. Uh, because I was I was paired into my third Baby Blasophilon of the day. <laughs> and he, he had one more point than me, even. And he asked for the ID. And uh, I took it. I, I didn't want to play that matchup. So I think my resistance was relatively high, um, and that would be like two out of eight or something. I would bubble on 30 points, which is what I was going to uh, get if I, I did my last two rounds. Uh, but I went for it, and um, I did last round as well. Um, and uh, last round, table one to four, I did. Table five and six were playing their winning in, but both of the tables actually got untied. They didn't want... Oh. Uh, Joe, Joe was one of them actually playing on streaming against Logan and uh, since both of those tables tied that meant that uh, there were no bubbles anymore since uh, yeah they just uh, all beat out themselves no one had enough match yeah. points to contest our same score so actually ended up being a really safe call uh, but uh, felt really scary there and then so I made it into top 8 Kind of cheaply uh, after only winning like two rounds of the day, but uh, it felt pretty good. And um, I think I ended up being like fourth or fifth seed anyway. So even if they did win their matches, I wouldn't be the one getting kicked at least yeah. because my resistance was relatively high. So I was happy with that. Um, top eight, I play uh, Magnus, who's playing yeah. Pika. Okay. Uh, well, he had such an unfortunate series. It was uh, crazy, actually. He. It opens the Dena all three games, Ooh. like for starters, uh, which is extremely bad against ADP, because um, then he has to use at least one for Zedder, right? And then he has two of the Dena in play, and 
I can just go GX back to back catchers and win the game. Never have to knock out yeah. one of his tag teams. Um, but like first game at least, he I, I go first even. He opens the Dana. I go pretty good start. ADP attach. Um, station opening. Um, so I use my station ability. He two metal on ashes. Like, mm -hmm. cool. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> attach, attach bolt. That was really good on his own. But then Magnus goes attach uh, lightning to the Dana and pass. Like straight up. So... I go research, uh, no energy, okay, uh, acrobat, oh, there's the energy, okay, donk. So uh, that was also a way to win, I guess. Um, so I got the donk there. And uh, game two, I discarded one water energy uh, before I had a deck search and before I had ADP in play. Uh, and then I get an ADP and, and attach to it. And next turn, I dig more and get the spinner, my first deck search, and I find out I price the other water energy. Oh, no. Which is like one of the downsides that can happen with only having yeah. so few outs, uh, or like not few outs, but few physical copies of the energy you need. Mm -hmm. And since I didn't have the deck search yet, I had no way of knowing. So I couldn't just go into like a straight station route even. So that ended up costing me the game because I just couldn't GX and I already invested energies onto my ADP. Uh, I was going second. So even if uh, mine's open the Dene, he got like his turn to full blitz off and uh, I lost that one. Um, and game three, uh, I go first, have a good start again, everything. He opened the Dene, of course. And uh, he missed the turn on full blitz, and that's basically a game from there. Then I went GX and then back to back chaos on the Dene's. And that, that was the series. Well, we take them, don't we? To be fair, we take them. <laughs> I mean, I guess. The semi final and final were both streamed, so like, if anyone wants to watch that, they can. Um, I just wanted to say that I was pretty fortunate in both of them. Like the mirrors are not too fun to play, especially if both players know what they're doing. Um, I felt my list was pretty good. Though. I always looked like a Harold like crazy, but I was playing the faster version, so it was kind of warranted that I drew well. But they were really drawing suboptimal as well, and uh, like whiffing every intrepid sword while I hit like crazy and uh, on my swords. And uh, missing supporters, I got all mine. So it was even with the list differences, I was pretty lucky um, to just have so commanding board states in those games. Oh, for sure. Well, there we go. That's what it's all about, though, to be fair. <laughs> so moving forward, then, obviously we, we would have had EUIC, but uh, that's not a thing anymore. Uh, let's just okay. let's just yeah, let's just pretend for the rest of the interview that EUIC is still around. Um, how would, <laughs> is is there any changes you'd make to your sixty moving forward? Mm, not quite sure. Um, maybe I would have uh, a Fion or another guest effect, or maybe an Absol for the mirrors, mm -hmm. because now people obviously uh, play the same engine, or like they can at least. Play the same engine uh, if they want uh, a faster version of it, and uh, then maybe you would want some kind of advantage. Me saying this, then if everyone does, you don't have any advantage anyway, though, so it doesn't really matter. But um, maybe try to gear the deck more for the mirror because I just really think it's the best deck out there. Uh, it's been a long time since we had a deck that just looked so dominant with like no clear counters in the format. Like you can. You can say you can counter it with Obstagoon, but Obstagoon is has its flaws as well. And as yeah. you saw, we we had a couple of texts for it. I played my Oranguru research management, so yes. If they go for the full setup, they will lose to research management custom catchers, because um, then you can still just guest around. If they go for the like solo Obstagoon plan with Rhysion, you can go uh, Oranguru and confuse them, and eventually they will flip tails and lose. And if they want to get out of confusion, they have to bench something. And if they bench something, you can take more prizes by guesting again. So uh, it's a really nice tech for the Obstagoon matchup. And um, another tech we were playing was Mobile, like yeah, uh, Medi yes. and Pedro, for example, did. And then the deck gets really, really sketchy to against ADP because... Like, your main win condition, since they have so many ghost effects, is just go racing, right? And just mm -hmm. try to solo them with one obstagoon. But, but with uh, Mobile, uh, as soon as they go racing GX attack, 
you bench small and then you just say like, ah, I put down everything again. <laughs> <laughs> like you pick That's up five Pokemon yeah. and then Moral comes in and just put all five down and you can might as well just fold the game because they can just guess a couple more times and you're dead. So I, I felt we countered up the game pretty well uh, for this tournament. I didn't end up facing any. Um, so my research management monkey, I didn't no meal either. So my monkey didn't do anything. Oh really? It was actually, <laughs> just, actually just a blank. I was playing the whole tournament with fifty nine cards. <laughs> then I never opened him and never benched him though. So it could have been any card. It was uh, was honestly just a blank. I could hit him sometimes with quick pull. I think that was like the best I could do with him. Or maybe with Aqua Bike, we saw two cards. Like, oh, I'm going straight to the discard pile, please, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a really nice blank. Right? <laughs> you can go for him. Sometimes I kept him, like, just in case, because uh, a lot of games, when you dig so aggressively, can mm -hmm. go into a state where your opponent can do the switch, where he tries to do just to deck you out, right? Because, say, you discard a three or four switch, and you don't have many energies left, right? Then your opponent can do the switch and be like, okay, you have something fat on the bench, like an ADP with no energies. Then it can just start guesting that up and say pass, right? Yeah. So to prevent that strategy, sometimes I just kept Rangur in my hand or deck so that I had access and, uh, if my opponent tried to like uh, cheese me out of the game by um, going for my resources in the end. No games ended up coming to that way or like my opponent never went for it so never had to do it but it was actually a kind of nice option to have like just in case if my opponent saw the line that he couldn't win on prices anymore uh, but often they just conceded before it came to that so it was never relevant but it could have been so I, I liked having the option for it yeah, no, definitely. That's one thing I noticed when I looked at your list. I thought, oh, that's a good card. Uh, like you said, even potentially um, to stop against the sort of mill stall approach, but then to also, like, if you do get rid of quite a few, like you said, switches and stuff, you might maybe just shuffle them back in on an off turn. Yeah, it's not not a bad shout. And then against the uh, goons, like you said, that's uh, that's pretty nuts, to be fair. As an LAB, ADB player, as well, like that goon, that lone goon can be a problem. So, um, yeah. So, like you and said. And obviously, like, just auto wins the middle matchup as well, right? Oh, yeah, Especially of course, yeah, yeah. play like your Fari because you can just GX, and after you GX, even if they play a ton of hammers, eventually you will get the GX off um, with your Rangur recycling your energies. And then you can use your Rangur to recycle all your guest effects, and you can use Station to draw into like 50 cars, right? Or yeah. Like as many as you want to. And then you can start attacking. And you can go into monkey again whenever, right? So I don't see like any way they win if you just play that patiently. Uh, if they don't play like air fire or something, and even then it should be really hard for them. Yeah, and that's pretty good. And and, and if you can show sure up mill, that's always a good thing to do. <laughs> so I imagine at cops and stuff, we will be seeing it. So yeah, looking at the day two, then like you said, thirty eight percent was um, ADP, which is nuts. I don't think I can't remember there being. Um, as big as that before, I might be wrong, but I can't think of any. Um, moving out of ADP, what would you say uh, the sort of power player decks after that? Like, let's say for some reason someone can't play ADP, but they want to pick up a good deck and do well. What sort of, which direction would you point them in? Um, I did post a tire list on my Twitter where I like uh, pointed out all, all the decks I felt were the best for the format. I still think the list is pretty accurate, actually. Um, you have um, meta swings and stuff like that, and people mm. want to counter things. But originally, I put like ADP Station as the best deck, and yeah. then Cincino Mill as like the second best deck because uh, if you don't really respect it, you'll just uh, run away with uh, the games and the format basically. So if you're not prepared, it will just beat you. Um, and then I had uh, Pika. Uh, up there as another one of the really best decks because it's just really fast, really consistent in what it wants to do. Uh, can get the full blitz off really well. The quick ball really helped elevate yeah. that deck again because you now have easy access to Tapu Koko and you have the tackle engine, so you have easy access to Thunder Mountain. And when you have easy access to both, your turn one full blitz gets uh, a lot easier to do. And the turn one full blitz basically beats anything in the past, so. Yeah. It's it basically does that still. If you get the turn on full blitz, you will probably win all matchups. Yeah, that peak one can be scary staring that one down, let me tell you. <laughs> so you mentioned that you, sure. you think Mill's like the second best deck in format. Do you feel as if that gets better or worse coming out of these results? 
I mean, when I play research management, I guess it gets worse. Not the true. winning list has that uh, really hard counter card in it to beat Mill. Um, uh, I think I still think Mill is all right. Sandra had a really fun approach to Jesus, the Mill yeah. deck. I still think his deck also don't appreciate the research manager on Guru. So maybe he would want to take your Fari for it again. Um, but uh, yeah, I, th I think Mule is always a threat out there and should be respected. I, I at least like to respect it as much as I can um, whenever I see a danger for it at least. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I also like Pika and obviously Mewtwo, uh, which I played um, at those IC. Yes. It's still a, re still a really good deck, of course. Uh, so I would probably recommend playing... Uh, like, like my top decks at the moment should be uh, Mewtwo, ADP Station, Mill, and Pika. Awesome. Yeah, love that. Love that. So you mentioned briefly there, World of Mewtwo. Now I'm looking at this day two. I'm not seeing a great deal. Why do you reckon that is? I think uh, the deck was really uh, teched for this tournament. Um, so I even teched really hard for it myself. I played double Frank Pan and double Shrine, mm. which is crazy good against uh, Welder Mewtwo. Because then you turn off the Victini option. Um, so they basically have to go in and do 300 to your ADP after your GX to have a chance. Yeah. And um, then you, when you answer with the Sation, they can just answer with Victini. And then normally the list just can't yeah. um, get that second station immediately, right? Without the... Um, uh, that, will, that will just require all four sorcerers. And normally it's really hard, unless you can go deck out with Acropax, then it's easier. Yeah. Uh, but th that was the plan. But if you have frying pans, then you can't answer with Victini. So you have no way to actually do the knockout on uh, the station. And then that Station is just going to take six prizes on its own, and you can't yeah. do much about it. So, uh, the Frank Pan's really good against that matchup, really good against Firebox, and uh, yeah, and, and the Shrine obviously puts your Mutus at one hit knockout range. Yeah. Um, and like I said, all, all of the Mutus at the same time, so you don't have to hit like uh, the damage modifier for both of them, you just need one Shrine. And those are kicks their stadium, which can disrupt them as well. So, um, Really good card against Welder Mewtwo, basically. Um, that's why I want, want to play two of each, uh, just to make sure that matchup was really good. And it uh, worked out. Yeah, uh, I, I could, I've been the recipient of a Welder Mewtwo where they just went Flare Blitz 300, whatever it's called. The next turn, Victine, you're like, oh, okay, this is a problem. <laughs> like, yes. like, there's uh, not a lot that, I can that, that do now. plan to beat ADP um, in the beginning, so. But now countering that counter plan again uh, makes it really hard for them. Uh, I still like the deck a lot, though. Like Mewtwo has a lot of options. It feels really consistent. Yeah, a lot, uh, lot to do, basically. And I, I do still appreciate that. Like The ADP station deck is really straightforward, very linear. Uh, so I, I, basically, I was going to Wigan feeling kind of tired. So I wanted something a little more easy. And uh, after your first deck search, the deck kind of plays itself if you just pay a little attention to your resources be like okay i need to count my custom my source my switch and uh, you're basically good to go and uh, yeah just be careful with ruining resources basically um it felt really nice to play though because it felt like you play basically picture perfect whole tournament like it was not too much to mess up which is really nice Whenever I play a more complicated deck, I always poke at myself for doing more mistakes because then you have much more attacks or much more lines you can go. And yeah, yeah. But but this is like okay, I GX, the bum, I mm -hmm. take care of this resource, I save this. Okay, okay, this is the correct order. All right. So it, it does give a nice feeling knowing you can play the deck. Yeah, basically optimal. Yeah, that's true. Especially like playing ADP before when you're having to like potentially use your Malo Lanas, heal this damage. Do I do it now? Do I do it now? This time it's just like, all right, GX now, bang, to three prizes. What's yeah. next? Bang, that's it. Yeah, I think there's the something to be said for that. The, like the list didn't have many comeback options either. It didn't play Stamp, didn't play oh, Absol, all of that. Um, you just had the Marnie. That was the, like the only disruption faction. But Marnie actually is pretty big because. 
You just slam the money turn one or turn two to disrupt your opponent, and if they miss a beat, then that's actually all you need for the game anyway, because the games are so fast-paced. So, if they miss late game or if they miss early game, it's actually the same thing. But uh, if you go for it early game with money, then you can also get to play a consistency card, which draws your card instead of playing stamp, right, or Absol or like other dead cards. Then if you just play more consistency and um, Try to take a turn away from your opponent early game instead of late game. So I felt that was a pretty fine approach as well, actually. Um, but I mean, normally I like having more options and more comeback options if mm -hmm. things go wrong and uh, everything. But this time I felt it was I felt it was okay. No, that's pretty good. Like, see, well, obviously it worked for you. So. <laughs> you... Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> um... One deck I didn't see a lot of in day two was the um, the Mewtwo Mali. Do you feel as if that deck's completely fallen off now, or is it still merit for people to play it potentially? Mm, I still think it's a really good deck. Uh, I'll still pick it as one of the like absolute top decks uh, for sure. But uh, it does struggle with uh, some inconsistency because yes. you have to set up evolution Pokemon, which is not too great. Uh, even if it's only stage ones, uh, you kind of need to set them up. And you can't you can't always do that um, consistently. Uh, you just need more pieces to execute its game plan. Yeah. But if you do execute your game plan, you have a really powerful deck, though. So that's the thing. You kind of trade some uh, power level. You get a lot of power level for some consistency. And um, I definitely think it's still a strong deck. I was playing against a day one actually, and uh, I was kind of lucky to beat it. Because like sometimes they just don't set up right, and sometimes they do set up and they just run run through you and they can't do too much about it. Like turn one, um, what is the name? Horror House. That's it. Yeah, Horror House. Yeah. yeah. Turn one Horror House into like double Malamar and then like a Marnie Dusknor or like um, you have a big hand and then go for a Poltergeist to one shot attack team or something. It just there's no way back from that. You just lose right and. Uh, that's just how they go sometimes, and uh, just really powerful. Yeah, I've been so, I've been the recipient of that the old horror house into KO ADP. Like, well, like there's not I can do now. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, you lose, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's... literally scoop them up onto game two. I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, and it was, especially with like the Malamars in play, they basically just need a basic Pokemon to uh, get their next attacker. If you were uh, lucky enough to get through their first one, so um, yeah, true. just really kind of oppressive uh, when everything gets rolling there. Um, not as bad as in expanded, of course, but uh, it's still pretty hard. Like you go to turn one horror house, you go money, and you go Desknor, and your opponent is at two cards before you play the supporter. That's uh, kind of nasty. Yeah, that's uh, that's a different ball game. That one expanded. It. Oof, we don't want to worry about that one too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't play expanded anyway, so it's all good. Yeah, neither do I. I'm bad enough at standard in a different format. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> one deck I saw that took a lot of people by surprise in the quantity that was played at Malmo, um, and it got a decent-ish kind of showing, I guess, in day two was the the Macargo, the attacking Macargo. Um, oh yeah. How much merit do you give to that? Because I love decks where you can really like sort of search your deck, you know, have a real big influence on the game. Um, and that was a deck I was playing a little bit before, and now it's had a decent showing. I feel a bit more confident potentially sleeving it up. How do you feel about Makaga? I think it's a really good deck as well. It has really good power level, um, but uh, it's basically kind of in the same category as Malamar. It's just one of these really powerful decks that trades its power level for consistency because you actually need to evolve your things. Mm -hmm. So like the first turn and two for the deck is really sketchy because your game really depends how many basics you can actually accumulate during that first or second turn. Yes. And if you go first as well. Um, so say uh, uh, ADP goes first and a GX on turn two. If you d then don't have a five energy Macargo to knock them out, you lost the game, right? Yeah. So that that can be a problem. Uh, like even with amulets, you will lose the game uh, if they can GX and you don't knock them out. That's just how it is. Um, but uh, after you get rolling, uh, you can't be stopped because you have the smooth over, you have the macargos to extract energy. Even you will always get what you need basically, and it's really consistent after setup. That's the thing. So. As soon as you got your setup, you'll just roll through it uh, or roll with it. 
So I think the deck kind of gives you a false sense of consistency. I, th I think that's the thing, because you actually have to set up before you have your consistency. And um, then you would think it's really consistent, right? But it's only after setup. Uh, so that well, that depends on how many basics you get, and that's kind of random. But deck is really strong. And uh, if you get the hot start, you will beat pretty much anything, I think. It's even more linear than ADP, though. I think that's the issue for me with playing the deck. Uh, you literally just smash the active. You don't yeah, take extra prices. You don't really play any gusting effects because you're too worried about setting up all your snails on your own. You maybe play like one great catcher top. Um, and then you just smash the active and uh, hope that strategy will win you the game. Uh, so it, it's all right. Definitely fine deck, but not not a deck I would want to play personally. But it's definitely a fine deck. Awesome. Now, <clears throat> I'd love to give it a little sleep, but you're right. The sort of amount of games you have where you sort of pop off and like, everything's in your in your control is also equal to the amount of games you get two slugma down and one of them gets carried. And you're like, all oh, right, here we go. <laughs> like you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, I do love it though. I love being able to just search and do all that stuff. Oh, I love that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Now, we mentioned it a little bit earlier. Didn't have a good showing at this tournament. Goons, do you feel as if there's any merit to play such a deck now? Or is it just a sort of a, just uh, leave it alone? I mean, before Malmo, I think it actually won the last big tournament. Before oh, that. yeah, it did, probably, yeah, yeah. And probably why a lot of people respected it, me included, uh, and why we wanted to play like Oranguru and Mowal and uh, all this stuff. Um, so I think Guns is one of the decks that people don't can't, can't be respecting if you want to do well with it. Um, it obviously takes a loss to any deck that has attackers that evolves. So like Macargo, you basically can't beat, right? Yeah. It'll just run through you. Even if you have like some GX options, you can't really do too much against them. And um, uh, if people are are prepared and have like some cute techs, then you can overcome them, of course. But it's really annoying and hard. And um, your deck is inherently very inconsistent because not only are we playing stage ones, where I expressed a, ex expressed concern that yeah. you're kind of inconsistent. You're playing a stage two deck, and you have really low damage output as well. So I don't know. It kind of feels more like a medical deck and almost like a gimmick deck. Uh, yeah. I don't like it too much, um, but uh, it's all right. I know a lot of people love it, and it's the goons, it's a ziggy, it's zig the goon, and yeah, uh, everything. It's... it's a lot of fun, though, but I don't think I would take it to a serious tournament. I even faced Tim in the tournament. Uh, he got top four at those IC with uh, goons, and even he didn't play it. <laughs> uh, so I felt that was like a sign that probably the goons should be on the backseat for a little wait until people stop respecting it and then you can try to come back yeah that's it that's but, because it. Right, right now people just don't want to lose to it and that's not a good time to be playing goons so yeah this is true especially like i said if any sort of evolved and or special condition random thing can beat it then um but yeah give it give it a few months guys i'm sure we'll see goons again so it's sort of like how mill does no one respects mill or well, in past times no one respects mill then bang it just uh, takes over at home We're like oh yeah but uh exactly <laughs> gotta watch out for that um, another deck that did actually did pretty good in my match. I want to quickly grab your opinions on uh, the Firebox. Now, obviously, that did super well in the uh, OCIC. Everyone sort of forgot that like, the old consistent decks are still really, really good. How do you feel that is moving forward? Mm, I think the deck is still fine, still a powerful deck, like it was at Worlds. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. It ha does have some kind of issues. I don't think the Pika or the Mewtwo matchup is too great. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know, but it's, it's still it's still a strong deck. It's really fast, right? In theory, it's really good. But I feel the bench management with the deck is kind of awkward. Mm. Um, because often you're forced to bench a lot of things because um, you can't really conserve your Pokemon. And like sometimes you just need to bench them. And you do play the Zen engine and you have to bench uh, like double Irachi to draw into your builders every turn and stuff like that. So, oh, it's it, it's a fine deck. Bench management is kind of awkward. It has a couple matchups it's kind of struggles with, but um, overall, a really fine deck. Really aggressive deck. Um, and you have the nine tails, which is really nice. Yeah. So you have the best gesture in the format, just anything, which is um, 
really appreciate it in a format with um, like customs as the only way to get to V Pokemon, for example. Yeah. Um, when you can go in with Night Elves and just just anything anyway. You don't have to rely on Great Catcher or customs or all these wonky things. I will change them when we get the new Lysander reprint, but uh, right now I, I, I do appreciate a good Night Elves. Night Elves are really nice. Yeah, Nine Cells is insane. I think that's one of the main reasons to play Firebox. So I remember when I first started trying to Makaga, I tried to fit the uh, Nine Cells in there. It didn't quite work out, but <laughs> but it's just. I guess I guess that's the biggest selling point of Firebox right yeah. now. Yeah, you, you get to play the Nine Cells, and that's really really good, right? So. Yeah, like the amount of time you've been playing, I think oh, I really want to hit Gus that thing, but I just the hand ain't gonna let me do it. And with Firebox, just like <laughs> yeah, giant half, yep, see you later. Like you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. For just sure. just get it clean out of the way. Um, so yeah, but that's pretty much all I wanted to cover there. Let's pretend EUIC was tomorrow, Todd, okay? Um, would you still be playing your uh, ADP list, I imagine? Yeah, I think so. That that seems fair. Um, haven't really uh, been bothered to cook up another new deck since I got home a couple of days ago, so just picking the same one again feels reasonable to me. I don't think it's too many hard counters you can play against it at all anyway, so... It's probably a fine pick. Uh, really dominant deck in the meta game for sure. And it was expected when we knew the cards were printed, and it just yes. ended up being so crazy powerful anyway. So completely, completely fair. Really good deck, of course. <laughs> no, insane. Um, so we've been getting forty-seven percent of day two. Let's say someone just wanted to just go out, and ruin your day toward, and just play the counter. Would you say Baby Clowns is the is the best way? Because obviously that did really good as well, right? Yeah, maybe Baby Blounds is one of the better way to counter it. Um, but it's still like, it's really scary for them as well, because you GX and they'd miss knockout and you still win, right? So uh, obviously they can still win if instead of taking a knockout, they can do another prize. So say they go like uh, Blaze GX and take a prize. But if, if you do that, you can't have any other GXs on the field though, because sure. then you're losing two turns instead of three. Uh, or if you. <coughs> And knock out the Irachi early, then uh, you also don't have to do the one shot right after Jack's attack. But and things like that. Um, and even if that would became a popular strategy to like um, keep ADP in check, ADP can take for that matchup as well. Because sure. Baby Blounce is one of the decks that printed a really hard, big hard counter for, which is Tapu Fini, right? Yeah. So if you go GX attack and then you play one or two type of Fini, then I guarantee you will definitely win that matchup <laughs> anyway, right? No matter how hard I try. So, uh, yeah, you, you you can take for it if they take for you or like play the like counter deck. So it's it should be really hard to stop that deck no matter what. And just so inherently powerful. We have crazy consistency in station and draw extra prices. You have way too much damage for three energies and you have metal closer to that pokemon yeah so i don't know we will see what happens in the future but right now it's it's the deck to beat for sure it's crazy yeah. no it's it is insane it's absolutely nuts i remember i was at a challenge of a day and uh, i think i hit a venus or snivy tag team or something then they did the madolana and i was like <laughs> i was like wait i can still just kill this again like come back i was like that's insane for free energy two shot after madolana that's just ridiculous Oh boy! <laughs> well, well, like that, that, that is so high that you can't really heal with no. Malolana or anything. You, no. you need a full heal to get things out of range from uh, ADP or the station attack. So that's uh, that, that's what makes it so uh, good as well. Because you can't because like against Keldu ADP, you can just heal and then it'll yeah. do another attack, and they didn't really have the damage output they needed. Now they now they do have the damage output, so they'll just. Ran through. You either beat them quickly or you lose quickly. There is no in between. No, this is this is very true. Oh, speaking of um, Zation's power level, have you? Um, what's your thoughts on the sort of the speed Zation where you don't play the ADP, you play a lot more shrines, and you play the uh, Dusk Shot promo Dusk Mage? Do you feel as if that warrants any um, anyone's consideration in the matter, or do you, or should we just be playing ADP? I mean, I guess it's I guess it's okay, and then you probably play with Melcario, right? Uh, yes, yeah, I've seen some of this played yeah. out as well, yeah. The tank. Um, I mean, I was uh, thinking and testing it a little bit, but if, I felt like whenever you play against ADP, you basically do the same thing if both players play Frank Pan, of course. Then yeah. both players two-shot each other, but the ADP deck takes another prize. 
right? Yeah, yeah. Because they, they don't have the extra damage buff, but you have the extra damage buff, but they have the damage reduction. So basically, you just have the price attack advantage. Because you will both, both be doing 200 to each other. You will do 260 minus 60, and they will do 230 minus 30 from the frying pan. So both players will two-shot each other, in theory, but you will take another price. And uh, I think you will win if you take another price, because you just win one turn before them. Yeah. So I think you should be favored as ADP in that matchup as well. Even though a lot of people say it's a big counter. I guess that's if you don't play frying pans, though. Because if you do play frying pans, then I think the matchup should be favored for ADP. Without, sure. Then they one shot and you don't. And uh, then you should be able to win as the Malkario. Yeah, that's true. And I guess that I find that Mel, uh, Melkaria version doesn't really do a lot against other decks as well. Like, there are other decks in Fortnite as well, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's also a problem, right? I think the ADP version is better against the other decks uh, in addition. So I don't see any reason to play the Melkaria version over it when it's only arguably better in some versions of the Mirror and worse against everything else, especially against Mir uh, Mill, I mean. Uh, against Mill, you really want that extra price when you try to snipe off things uh, on the bench uh, and going around the dolls. You definitely want that extra price. Yeah, that's true. And that yeah. extra price yeah. is just the ultimate, like, what I call it, um, just stop that there. Like, if you're trying to play something cute, that's fine. I'm going to take an extra price, though, so you can't. <laughs> but stop a lot of cute decks, for sure. Also, Malamar, I guess, could be really annoying if you can't take the extra price. Oh yeah, true. Because yeah. the, they uh, basically go all in clear vision, and if they miss it, they just lose, right? Yeah. So if you don't have the option in the first place, then I don't know if you'll get through it. You can probably you can tank a lot though, but I don't know if it will be enough anyway. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, thank you so much for coming on, Todd. Um, no problem. Loved it. Uh, the floor is yours. Any shout outs you've got? Anyone that helped you along the way for Malmo? The floor is yours, my friend. Uh, shout out to my sponsor Tom from 8 Planet, and uh, shout out to my friends, family, and uh, Team Limitless, everyone, and uh, everyone writing me messages. I do really appreciate it. And uh, what kind of drives me to like try to make new decks and uh, just test for tournaments. And I do enjoy the game a lot, having a lot of fun. So thank you all so much. I do appreciate it. Did you have your uh, Celebi plush with you, Malmo? Oh yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> on the table every game, even on the stream games, but it was just a little far off from the camera. But uh, it was there, for sure. Love that, love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on, especially so soon after your Malmo as well, to be fair. I'll let you go and rest up now, my friend. <laughs> thank you so much, though. Awesome. Well, and thank you guys for watching um, the Slow Poke Well, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video, much appreciated, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't hesitate to subscribe, I try and put out as much stuff here as I can. Full deck profiles, plus games, topic conversational pieces regarding anything in the TCG. Um, check out my Twitter, check out my Facebook, that's where you get most of the updates, sort of see what's going on behind the scenes, all that good stuff. Also check out the SoundCloud for the full um, bi-weekly podcast. If you're interested, if you like the conversational pieces, go check that out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day.